What is up everyone? Shane and Shirley here. We're starting a channel um, called Human Kitchen where we are going to bring you into our kitchen. It will be just two humans in a kitchen. And hopefully some amazing creations in our kitchen. So here we go. Yay! Partnership. Partnership! Okay, so first high quality, high depth, high fidelity video is going to be what are we making? How to brew beer! <laughs> Yay! Yes. Beer! I will be looking at Shane as he talks and tries to explain to me how to brew beer yes. for the first time in forever. He's done it about whoa, whoa, whoa. total no. three times. I'm a master brewer. Okay. He's a master yeah. brewer? Listen guys, I'm a master brewer. I've done this countless times. I'm an expert in this. Expert. Um, yeah, I mean, I could start a brewery anything. If you want to if hire I him. If I, if I want to start a brewery, I mean, I can start a brewery. I mean, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I, I know what I'm doing. Be sure to smash that like button. Like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, so let's, okay. let's walk through the ingredients. <laughs> the yeast will in turn poop out alcohol. And we're going to be drinking yeast poop. Yay! <laughs> First thing, before I walk you through the ingredients, I'm going to walk you through the uh, standard equipment that you would need to brew beer. Invest in a five gallon uh, stainless steel kettle. Next, you're going to need at least one five gallon bucket. This five gallon bucket has a nozzle on the front. This is going to be helpful for bottling our beer. First, we're going to fill up our brew kettle with about two and a half gallons of tap water. So now we're boiling two and a half gallons of water, and once we bring this to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to steep our specialty grains for 20 minutes. So our water's at 140 degrees now, so we're going to steep our specialty grains for 20 minutes. Can we just drop that in there? I've read suggestions to not squeeze uh, and mix your bag too much. Uh, don't be too aggressive with it while it's in the brew pot because you might extract um, too much of the uh, dusty particles and other um, weird you know, impurities that you don't want in your beer. Just let it steep. You can kind of gently uh, swirl it around, uh, move it around the container just to kind of release some of that flavor. You can already see color coming off of it. So after 20 minutes of steeping, we removed our specialty grain bag. Now we've Increase the temperature and we are going to bring the boil to about 180 degrees and once we hit 180 we're going to add all of our liquid malt extract slowly while stirring. Okay so we're at 180 degrees it's time to rip open our liquid malt extract. We're going to slowly add this to the pot and my lovely wife is going to stir the pot as I slowly add the extract. This is a really syrupy mixture that's going to want to clump at the bottom and it's going to want to stick to the bottom of the hot pot. So we want to make sure that nothing sticks uh, and that it all just mixes up nice and evenly. Let's open it partially. And at 180, let's go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice amber colored syrupy goodness. It's gonna be great. Great. <laughs> it smells actually wonderful. <laughs> Once you're ready to bring your pot to a rolling boil after you've added all of your malt extract, you can remove your thermometer if you have one. Uh, at this point, you don't necessarily need to monitor the temperature. You just want to bring everything to a boil uh, and watch it very closely because at this point, now that you've added all the sugars, once this thing gets boiling, you're going to be liable of having a boil over. we would be making the beers. Boring. Boring. Ale. Ale. That's what he'd be doing. He'd be brewing the ale. Well, we're getting to a boil now. Uh, you can see it's starting to get really foamy. Uh, it's rises a whole bunch of foam so you gotta be really careful at this point I'm kind of lowering the heat to kind of give it a little bit of room uh, hopefully it goes down a little bit but at some point this is gonna break uh, and it's going to definitely like kind of recede in the boil 
once this breaks, you just want to maintain a gentle rolling boil. You don't want to overdo it because you might burn your sugars to the bottom of your kettle. So just get it to a nice rolling boil, uh, and then once you think it's kind of ready and uh, easy to maintain, you can start adding your hops. So I think that we're at a, at a gentle boil now, and I think it'll be easy to maintain this. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my hops. So now we're going to start our boil timer at 60 minutes with two ounces of Columbus hops. You can just drop that right in. So we're at five minutes remaining in our boil, and we're going to add our Whirlflock clarifying tablet. This is going to help set out any of the floaties that will be in the beer. <laughs> Okay, it's all of our steeping hops. There is one final addition of hops. Um, that's two ounces of centennial hops that we are supposed to dry hop. Um, the recipe says to dry hop during a secondary fermentation, but we're only gonna do a single fermentation. So at about uh, probably three days left in our fermentation process, I'll open up the lid, add the dry hops, um, and then let it ferment for three more days and that final dry hop will add um, one last bite of hoppy flavor. That'll be probably the most fresh and um, really aromatic of the hop additions. At this stage, we want to make sure everything's sanitary. Um, you don't want to touch your wort with uh, unsanitized hands. You can use your bare hands if they, have touched if they have touched the sanitizer and nothing else, but you want to make sure that, again, uh, the wort stays completely free of any contamination. So keep in mind at this point, once the wort is cool, it could get infected with other microbes and you want to make sure it's a clean environment for your yeast to thrive. This sanitizer is specifically designed for beer brewers. Um, as long as you mix it to the ratios that it says in the directions, which is uh, two tablespoons for a five gallon bucket of water, then you don't have to worry about it impacting your flavor. I'm going to pour the hot wort right into my fermentation vessel. Looks like we're right at just over two and a half gallons, so I'll add enough cold water to bring us up to five. So I'm reading about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I'd like it to cool off to the very least 90. I don't want to pitch it uh, any, any higher than 90. I and that'll be it, folks. Beer! So I just sanitized my yeast packet. We'll open it up. Smell all that air escaping. Mmm, oh, yeah. smells like beer. And now we just pour all of our yeast straight into the wort. Bottom boom, baby. Now we will make sure our lid is tightly sealed on. We have our rubber gasket plugged with an airlock in which star sand beer sanitizer or um, beer brewing equipment sanitizer has been added to the airlock. This is a little two chamber one way valve that it's going to allow carbon dioxide to escape from the top without allowing anything else to get inside. So it's a one way flow. Carbon dioxide is going to build up in here as the yeast begins to ferment the sugars from the malted barley and release gases to the top. So in a couple days, you should start to see a little bit of bubbling activity here. We're gonna store this in um, room temperature area, probably, you know, someplace that's around 80, 70 to 80 degrees, and let it go for two weeks. So in two weeks, we'll check it, and hopefully it'll be ready.